everyone, my name is Purse and today I'm going to do a bit of an in-depth tutorial on creating and spawning custom objects in Red Dead, um, specifically Red M. So this tutorial will also um, give a few tips on how to take objects that are already in the game that might not be spawnable and flip them so they can become spawnable as well. Um, so I got asked on my Discord to do this tutorial because the information that is out there is a little complicated for beginners. So I want to make this as beginner friendly as possible. Um, I'm open to questions either here on YouTube, um, on CFX or on Discord. So hit me up if you need anything. Um, but let's get started and let's uh, go through what programs you're going to need. So the first program you're going to need is Blender. So you can do this on 3ds Max, however I want this to be beginner friendly so I'm going to opt for a free to use software. It's also the one that has a lot of support right now for Red Dead. Um, so Blender will be your first thing. Solemns, um, which is historically an add-on that was used just for GTA, but there's been a lot more support for Red Dead as well, as well as some workarounds and some tricks that you can use for Red Dead. Um, optionally you can also have codecs if you're looking to get objects from the game directly. I personally don't recommend using Ninja Ripper, um, but that's completely your choice, not mine, but I use codecs. Um, you also need OpenIV, that is optional, but that's just how I do my texture um, part of this tutorial. It's just easy for me, it's just how I've been doing it. Um, you'll also need Spooner or your object spawner. So I'll be showing you both the framework that we use on TRP and also I'll just show you through Spooner um, for those of you running off of your own frameworks or other frameworks that are uh, free to use like RedM and Vorpcore. And you're also going to need likely a software to make or edit textures. So Canva is a really good start. I know some people use that. I personally use Photoshop and Procreate um, for drawing textures and all that sort of thing. However, those two aren't free. So get your Google on and I'm sure you can find something that'll work for you. Um, but that's about it for now. So those are all the things you're going to need. I'll put links to everything in the description. <laughs> Sounds so weird saying that, but I will put everything down there for you. Um, get all of that set up and then come back here and we can begin. I do also just want to preface that this is just how I do it. It might be really jank, but it's just how it works for me. So um, I'll take any tips or advice as well, but this is just how it works for me and how I've been doing it historically for the last uh, few months. So I hope that I can help you guys and I hope it's as simple as it can be. So let's get started. So here we are in Blender. Um, so if you have everything set up, you should have um, a little tab here on the side that says Solemn's Tools. You'll also have some additional importing and exporting options here. Um, just saying Codewalker XML on both of these here. So that will mean you're all good to go when it comes to the side of Blender. So I'm going to do a cube for this tutorial because cubes are super easy and for those of you who are learning I think a cube is a great place to start. If you've already got something you've modeled and you have textures ready to go this applies as well. In the future once you get this cube to work I think you know that'll untangle some of the complications that can come from sort of this overwhelming thing to learn. And I know as somebody who might not have um, experience either modeling or coding or something like that all of this seems super overwhelming so i want it to be super easy so we're going to start with a cube <laughs> so if you go shift a you can add a mesh and make it a cube you can also add that up here as well but we'll do it for that i'm going to rename this just to cube lowercase make sure everything's lowercase it's going to make your life a whole lot easier and then what we're going to do is we're going to go control a and select all transforms so all that's going to do is make sure that your transformations and your object is all at zero zero so now what we're going to do is we're going to turn this cube into a drawable object so something that is going to work in red m so we're going to make sure we clicked on our solemns tools tab here click on the drawable tools option and you should have these four options we're going to pop open create drawable objects we'll untick separate objects we'll separate sorry and then we'll tick auto embed collision uh, auto embedding your collisions will not cause crashes um, in my uh, historically in all of the objects I've created none of them have crashed from embedded collisions it's the textures but we can't have embedded but we'll get to that so we untick this we tick this and we go create drawable so should get a little green thing that says successful so that's great um, and up here your hierarchy would have changed just a smidge 
So now we have these under here. So your bound composite is um, your collision and your drawable model is the model itself. So let's work on getting this textured first. So we've got our lovely cube, say it's a crate, for example. What we're gonna do is we're going to ignore the bound composite for now. We'll open up our drawable model, one tab, and then we'll open it up again. So we see these three. What we're gonna do is we're gonna select cube underscore geom or geometry. We're gonna make sure that down here, we're going to be in our uh, material properties. It's sort of this little red checkered circle. And now we have these options up here. We're not gonna make a solemns material for the get go. Uh, a lot of people will, but I'm not going to just uh, because this is just how I do it. <laughs> and shout out to my lovely friend Elements for showing me these tips. So what we're gonna do is we're going to select new we got this plain old uh, blender material and what we're going to do now is since that's on there already we're going to jump over to the shading tab which is up here so we're already on layout we're going to jump here to this one shading so you're going to just have to ignore how much of a mess my shading uh, tab is uh, you might not have all of this but all you really need here is all you need is this window and this window so what we're going to do is we're going to get our texture so your texture should be in .dds format. Um, this is just the texture or the, the image format that is used in Rockstar games um, and a lot of games actually out there. So if you have a PNG or a JPEG right now, all you need to do is just convert it to a DDS. I will link in the description of the video a uh, really good converter for converting from PNG and that sort of thing over to DDS. So once you've done that, you're going to find your image and you're just going to drag and drop it into this little gray area so let me just grab that so we just drag and we drop so i've already done this earlier so it's already assigned so we're just going to drag this little color node and you put it into the base color so you when you drag and drop it it'll probably still be gray and you just drag and pop there we go and so now then you'll have this beautiful textured wood square if you need to do any UV editing, say your texture is blown out or not in the right position, you can go over to the UV editing tab up here on um, Blender, click on that, and you'll be able to just, you know, A to select all, or you can select certain faces um, if you select all of them, and then you press S, you can scale it, and all of that good stuff. So we're just going to leave it for now though, because we're just doing something basic. So that is all good, but remember, this is just a basic, uh, blender texture and we, we want a solemn texture so we're going to click onto our cube geom we're going to cop back over to our solemn's tools and we're going to go to the create shader option all you need to do is select whatever one you want to do here i'm just going to keep it at default and we're going to convert to selected all that did now is give us a few extra options with parameters and texture values and also make it compatible for the game um if you have multiple uh multiple materials like we were talking about earlier you just have to do it for all of them and you should be fine and then what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that our collisions and all of that are lined up uh, correctly so before we move on so let's jump over to bound composite expand this and what i want you to do is click on bound poly mesh and we're going to go to collision tools here this tab we're going to create a collision material. Um, I'm just going to do default again, but you can do concrete. There's some wood ones. If you select this little arrow here, um, you can actually search. I'm just going to create a collision material. And then we're going to jump up one thing in our hierarchy to bound geometry BVH. We're going to go to flag presets. I'm going to just use the general one again, apply flags. That's all you need to do. So those are your collisions sorted. Now what we want to do is we want to get our archetype definitions sorted. So this is our Y types. I'm just going to select the top one here. We're going to go to archetype definition, create Y type. For making this as simple as possible, we're also going to call this cube. <laughs> and we're going to auto create from selected, which is just our cube. Now we'll get this here, a um, few extra things. And once again, <laughs> to make this easy, we're going to go to texture dictionary. Now this is blank right now because we're not embedding our textures. Embedding textures on RedM creates crashes after about 10 to 15 minutes, I've noted. Um, and so what we're going to do, click in there, and I'm just going to write cube. Obviously, you can name this anything as long as it says the name of the texture dictionary you're going to use. Just for making this as simple and simple as possible, we've got the, the object is called cube, the Y type is called cube, and uh, the, the actual object itself is called a cube. So it's easy peasy. 
So we're gonna have the texture dictionary, the Y type and the object as cube. So that's all done. So all we need to do now is we need to scroll up a little bit, export Y type, navigate to wherever um, you're going to export this and just press export. Get a little successful thing here. And then we're gonna go file, export code walker, navigate back to wherever you're exporting again. Um, you don't need to export with Y types or anything like that. I don't select any of these. If you've got multiple objects or anything like that, you might need to change some of these, but we don't. We're just gonna export it and that should be successful. So now we need to jump over and work on the texture because right now, if we go into our folder, we're gonna see only the Y type and the YDR. And we're gonna need uh, a YTD, which is a texture folder. So let's work on that. So how I do this is a little bit different to how other people do this. Um, but what I do is I get OpenIV and I open up GTA. So we're gonna grab that. We're gonna start it up on Windows and what's gonna happen is it's going to load um, all of our folders, everything from the game, all that sort of thing. Now, what you're gonna wanna do is you wanna find like one of these lower ones here. I think it's 64V that I use, yeah. And then you're gonna click on that and go to Waterfog and pull out one of these dictionaries. I've already pulled it into my mods folder. And then what we're gonna do is say, we'll just select this one here. And we're going to make sure first that we're in edit mode. We're gonna select this. We're going to replace this particular thing with whatever we were using as our texture. So I was using this one here. I've just added it through. We're going to replace this. Um, we're also going to rename it to whatever the name of the texture was. So once we have put it in here and we've renamed it to the actual name of the texture, we're going to click save and we're actually going to rename this the cube. And then we're going to pull this out. We're going to just extract this. So I'm going to put that into my tutorial folder again and that will mean if I hop over to that we're going to now have cube, cube, cube. So we've got a Y type, a YTD and a YDR. Perfect. Okay, so the next thing you're going to need is you're going to need RPF Explorer. I may not have mentioned that at the start, but we're going to need RPF Explorer, which is Code Walker. And we're gonna open that up. It's going to load in as GTA. Um, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna scroll to wherever we, you've gotta open up the, the folder that you're using. So these are all my cubes here. So I've got it under my object tutorial. Make sure you're on edit mode for that as well. I'm gonna import our XMLs. And we're gonna grab those cause they're brand new ones. Pull it in there. And that'll mean now that we have these all here. So all it did is basically remove the XML and it's made it like uh, an actual YDR, YTD, and Y type. So that's all we need to do with that. We just need to pull it in there and we can close that. So I forgot to mention, you don't actually need to convert your Y type right now. We're actually gonna use a separate, differently formatted Y type um, to assist us. So we only needed to drag into uh, RPF Explorer, the YDR, um, the YDD is all fine, so that's okay. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna open up our Radium application data and you're going to drag in your YDR and your YTD. Drag that in there. And then what you're gonna do is go up here to the bar and you're gonna write CMD. So we open up a nice little window here with, uh, with the command prompt inside of your Radium application data. Then what you're going to need to do is we're going to need to convert these. So um, inside here, we're going to add this. I will put it on screen and also below what you need to type. Um, and we're going to convert our cube.ydr at the end. We're also going to convert our cube.ytd. And then you'll get these little things here that have appeared where we've done it and it'll just add ny at the end. Just drag them back into our folder. Next up, you're going to need to open up the particular Y type that will be linked in the description. Um, it's actually, I found it through uh, the CFX Discord from someone called Disguise. Um, and I know that a few people have posted this around. It's just a very basic Y type 
um, that is going to make it redeem compatible so i've opened this up here i will also obviously link it as well below and then we're going to open up our initial white type this we can't use so what we're going to do though is you want to go from bb oh sorry bs radius all the way up to bb min Control c copy that and you want to replace it in here that's all you need to do and then in all of these parts where it says like model name here is we're going to replace that with cube and same down here where your y type name is obviously our y type is still cube so we're also going to do it there as well um and so that should all be correct so we're going to save this into our uh, folder where we're doing the tutorial as well so everything's in the same place and we'll just call that cube a white type and yes you will have to override but that's all done and dusted so now what you should have here is you're going to have your cube underscore nya dot ytd your cube underscore nya ydr and your cube y type you're also just going to go on and delete these nya things here at the end from after you converted and so now you just have cube cube and cube Ignore the XMLs. So now what you want to do, grab those, copy them, and put them into your server folder. If you've streamed anything before, be it a wine map or a prop or anything like that in the past, you should have a streaming folder set up. Um, it'll have a basic FX manifest that's going to be slightly different and altered for this object. So I will also link that and you'll have a stream folder where you're going to put everything. So that's where we're going to put these. What we want to do in the FX manifest of this now that we have all of our cubes in here is it's going to be a little bit different in that we have these sort of different streaming things. I will also have this linked below. Um, and if you were say you're doing multiple um objects so say in the future you add another one put a comma and just change it change the name and then also do the same here and copy that so but right now we only have the one cube so we don't need to have any of that so we should be fine okay now that we're in the server what we're going to do is we're going to open spooner that is through the delete key we're going to press f and go to objects um now we're going to spawn this via its name which oh, so easy is cube and we're going to spawn by name what we're gonna do is we'll place it down and voila obviously it's a bit big <laughs> but that is simple enough and we have our cube in game um obviously we've done super basic teachers we didn't put any normals or anything like that on it i mean it's just the image it's also climbable our collisions work we want to lay on it we can <laughs> but yeah our our textures are in game and it will work um any time of the day um, our time here sorry my computer's a bit laggy but it is all here it is climbable it doesn't have any uh you know bump mapping or anything like that but it's just super basic but it is all in here and it is working and you can treat it like any other object um you can turn it you can twist it you can move it up and down and it'll work every time you'll be able to climb on it and it'll still be a functional object something you can fall off <laughs> So there you go, uh, that is the tutorial all done and dusted. If you're wanting something a little bit more in depth or you're needing some help or anything like that, as I say, you can come over to my Discord, you can ask me on CFX, you can ask me on YouTube, I will try my best. Discord, I'm the most responsive, so let me know. Um, but yeah, here we go, we have our object in game and I can't wait to see what amazing things you make. Have a lovely one and thank you so much, bye!